Welcome to the Generic Tech Support YouTube channel, a channel that really knows what's going on in this picture. Like and subscribe for more content. Hey guys, welcome to another operating system review. And in today's operating system review, we're looking at a really cool OS. This OS is actually built off of Arch Linux. It is not Debian based, it's not Fedora based, and it is specifically designed to be a gaming platform or a gaming system. Um, we have just logged into the system. This is the first time logging in. It asked for credentials to update the system automatically, and now it's through the process of running the update. Some of the things that you'll see right off the bat during the update process is that the screen itself is clear. We can see through it. So it's basically like a hollow screen when it moves. Something else that's really kind of neat is it has wobbly windows straight out of the box. So it comes with some nice graphical uh, configuration out of the box for the actual Arch Linux package. Um, that So this one specifically, and I'm gonna butcher the name, but I wanna say it's called Garuda. Um, it is specifically a um, Arch Debian uh, Linux, or I'm sorry, not Debian, but an Arch Linux package. So a lot like every other system that we've looked at, that we've spent any time actually looking at, this is built for a specific use case. This, while it's Arch, is actually built to be a gaming platform for Arch. Now you have to understand that Arch Linux, unlike Debian and unlike Fedora, is bleeding edge, meaning that they support the latest drivers, the latest kernel, the latest build. So if you need drivers for an NVIDIA card that was released last week, Arch is the operating system you want to use. If you need drivers for hardware that's less than six months old, Arch is the system you want to use because it gives you the bleeding edge kernel updates, it gives you the bleeding edge driver updates, it gives you all the newest and the greatest stuff. Now, traditionally, Arch is not the most stable. It's also not the most um, easily supported. So in other words, it's not gonna work for older hardware. So if you're running like a seventh gen processor, can you install it? Probably. Will it work as well as Debian? Absolutely not. But it is a slick operating system. It does offer a lot of functions, a lot of packages, a lot of features. And this one specifically built for gaming and also with all the visual effects built into it is kind of a cool package. So I think we should dig, dig deeper into it and take a look at what else it actually offers. But first, let's get it rebooted so that way we have all these system updates applied. So we're gonna log into the system, I guess for the first time since the reboot. And you can see right off the bat, this is what the actual logon screen looks like. I figured I would share with, uh, this with you just because it is a little different than what we usually see in our Debian based builds or even our Fedora builds. So on logon, this is the first thing we're granted or rather greeted with when we log onto the system. We could see the actual platform details. You'll notice that I have, at least on this machine, allocated 16 gigs of memory. Um, even though it says it's got 12 cores, it's really not. Right now, I'm only giving this system four cores. We can see that we have uh, driver configuration details in here. We could also see that we have our configuration uh, information as far as the actual operating system. Right? So we're running Pac-Man, so uh, 1804. So this, again, is an Arch-based system. And we could see here the welcome. So we got the welcome to Garuda or Garuda. Um, and then I'm just going to click OK. And it's going to check again, I guess, for updates on system logon. So we'll log back into this. And let's see if there's anything else available. So while this is doing this, let's just move this out of the way and take a look at some other stuff on the system. So I want to start off with saying that while this Garuda operating system is based off of Arch, there's really no like Ubuntu-esque operating systems based off of the three different flavors. So like Ubuntu is based off of Debian. We don't have like a Fedora, like Ubuntu equivalent or an Arch Ubuntu equivalent where it's like the sub package that's like directly based off of the, the Debian based system where it has all these additional functions and features and ease of use configuration or like Mint for that matter on Debian. There's not really like that sub package for Fedora or Arch. So I've, I've spent some time trying to find one that's, you know, a, a friendly daily driver that you could use. That's one of the other flavors of Linux. 
And quite frankly, Fedora itself is a flavor that is friendly to use just out of the box. Debian is not. Debian's not as friendly as like using Mint or using Ubuntu. Now you can make Debian as friendly, but at that point you'd be better off just running either Ubuntu or Mint. But with Fedora, Fedora is actually friendly right out of the box. I don't know that Arch is friendly out of the box. I've run Arch in the past and it was a little clunky. Now it works great once you get used to it, but it is, it is clunky. That said, I don't know if this Garuda or Garuda, Garuda operating system is as clunky as Arch. Maybe this is the Ubuntu of the Arch community. I'm not really sure. If somebody knows that, please add a comment down below and let me know based off of the core package of Fedora, Arch, and Debian, what is the equivalent of a Ubuntu system on Fedora and Arch? So something I really like about this operating system is actually the fact that it says it's the Bird of Prey. Now, if anybody knows Star Trek, then you know Bird of Prey and its reference. You could throw something down in the comments down below if you know what that is too, but that, that I like. It's kind of neat. Um, I don't know. It plays into all the nerdiness that we all are, right? So I'm going to just uncheck show this at startup because I don't want to see it every time I log into the system. But you'll notice that there is quite a bit in here. So there's the Garota Gamer. Let's click on that and see what's actually in here. Um, it looks like it's just packages, right? So it's packages we can install that are based off of gaming. It's kind of cool. We could install the Droid Cam. Uh, we have Xbox drivers, uh, I'm assuming for the controller. So Xbox controller drivers, so we can install the Xbox controller. That's pretty sweet. So we also have Fast Game. I'm not really sure what that is. We do have a VR video support, um, Game Scope. There's quite a bit in here, actually. There's Wine, Wine Tricks. There's the Proton customization, Proton Tricks, Boxtron. Uh, there is, there's Itch. There's Steam that comes pre-installed, Heroic Game Launcher, Mini Galaxy. There's a Game Hub, which supports GOG, Steam, and Humble bundles. I'm not entirely sure what all those are because I just don't do too much with games, gaming, and emulation stuff. Uh, but there is quite a bit in here. There's pre-built emulators that come with the system. So there's one for an NES emulator. There's Mupin, which I think is, yeah, NES, as well as I think one of these things is... Uh, N64, I think that's what Mupin is. But yeah, there's a bunch of emulator options in here, which is kind of cool. So this means that this thing supports right out of the box without having to do anything real customizations. We can install the ability to play emulated games, which is pretty neat. There's ScumVM, which is, that's cool if you don't know what that is. Um, there's Game Boy's configuration. Again, this is pretty sweet. Uh, I think that's for PS3. Pretty neat stuff, actually. So, so far, this operating system actually has some cool functions, cool features, cool factors. Let's close this out. So, let's see what else we have in here. We have a network assist. We have boot options. We have a partition manager. We have uh, file services. There's the web, wiki, donate, frequently asked questions. I have no idea what chaotic AUR is. Let's click on that. Oh, it's for AUR packages, which I'm guessing is probably Arch configuration packages or Arch packages. Let's see, uptime status. There's a vault. I'm guessing Google is probably its own proprietary Google search. There's Discord. There's an IRC. Yeah, this is pretty sweet, man. I mean, so this comes with a lot of just pre-built packages, which is pretty neat. So the system updates done. And then look, so... All those people that have asked me in the past, how do you install a printer? Right here. Do you need to install a printer, a scanner, or Samba support? So it has a setup assistant built into it, which is pretty nice because you got to understand, Arch has always been kind of like that hardcore Linux type of operating system. It's not made for the masses. It's made for the very few select people to run Arch. But the fact that this comes with all these pre-built assistants built directly into the OS that gives you the ability to really do things right out of the box without having to go through uh, doing things through, things through a command line really does help with running the operating system, making the operating system a daily use OS and easy to use. So I think one of the questions that I would have is does the Pac-Man configuration control settings work on this thing? Because I noticed at least on the, um, the Bazite system, that wasn't an option. That used its own kind of proprietary 
file manager, so the DNF didn't really work. So I'm wondering if we could do like a pacman command in here. Could we do sudo? And I think it's, I can't remember if it's SYU or system update. Uh, so it gives you the ability to run Garuda update instead. So we could actually hit yes. And then it'll crop to the password. So it's interesting that the Pac-Man configuration automatically translates to the Garuda update option inside of the actual operating system. So it's not 100% proprietary. It's kind of a mixture where it will give you the updated commands for the proprietary OS that differ from the actual configuration built into Arch, which is actually a nice setting. So that's something that we do see in Ubuntu on the Debian side. So if it's specific based off of Debian or specific based off of Ubuntu or Mint configuration, it'll translate those commands automatically for you so you could see them on the screen, which is clearly something that this thing's giving you as an option, which is pretty slick actually. Okay, so while this thing is running updates, obviously it's indicating that we should be patient. I figure it's important to just mention the elephant in the room, which is Bazite OS. So we reviewed that OS recently, and I gotta say that this is a much better package. It is altogether a better package. Now, Bazite obviously has more gaming functions, so if that's all you wanna use it for is a hardcore gaming package, then Bazite's the better answer. But if you're talking about an OS you could use as a daily driver, plus use it as a gaming function, this is a much better OS. It's just more polished, it's more put together, it feels better, it works better. It's altogether a better feeling OS, which says something because if you're gonna run this on a piece of hardware and dedicate that piece of hardware that's a PC, I would suggest using this over using Bazite. But if we're talking a handheld, then obviously Bazite's still probably the better option. So outside of our typical start button or start menu here, which is really just our dock that contains docked items that are you know frequently accessed items, on the top left hand side of the screen, we actually have a button we could push, which will have a pull down menu of more information, more applications. Which I'm not sure why, there it goes. It's not really the OS's fault, it's VMware. So once we're in here, we can see favorites, stuff that we have in here, go into all applications. And we have a variety of everything, development tools, now I'm just showing you the things on the screen just so you could see them, but not necessarily giving descriptions of everything because quite frankly, I just don't know Arch that well. But if we go into games, you could see that we do have some other things in here. Like uh, there's a DOSBox emulator built into it. Um, and if we scroll and scroll, you could see a variety of games that are built into the system. They just come prepackaged. Go into graphics, we got the same thing. Internet. It's a torrent, Steam, native, Steam runtime. There's a variety of different things in here. Mumble is in here too, which I believe, yeah. So it's a voice chat. Go into multimedia, see VLC player. Go into office, and then it's got a document reader, just like, the, I believe it's the same one we get in Bazite. If we go into system, we get additional configuration things in here as well, including the console. Snapper tools, which is to create, delete, restore snapper snapshots. Um, we can come down here into utility. Now, keep in mind that Bazite uses a file structure called Atomic. Atomic takes snapshots on the fly. So if you install an update and it breaks it, you could use Atomic to just roll back the update. That doesn't exist in Arch. In the Arch configuration, at least on this system, it uses the snapper system to create the snapshot of the actual system. So that's just something to keep in mind that there are differences obviously in the OSs between the two different platforms when it comes to gaming systems. Um, if we come down here into wine, see that we have a variety of wine configuration. Now there is something in here, I believe that this system runs bottles. I just wanna do a search real quick under all applications to see if that's true. Yep, there it is, bottles. We're just gonna click on this. So you're probably asking, what is Bottles? Well, Bottles is actually the backbone of the crossover application that we used in the Linux Mint configuration where we set up Microsoft Office. 
So Bottles will allow you to install Microsoft Office. We already know that that works. Now, the thing about Bottles is, is that with the crossover application, all the prereq configurations are automatically done. But in the Bottles application, you have to manually put the prereqs into place. So you need to know specifically what applications, what needs to be installed in order to run Bottles, which we know that it does work because in the crossover application, we're able to tell what bottle you know, what the, what the container, what the bottle needs to contain in order to run the application. The downside is, is since this isn't crossover, but it's just bottles, it doesn't have the pre-built requirements for running an Office application or other applications. And as a result, you need to manually enter them. And I, to be honest with you, don't know what is all required in order to run Microsoft Office. I mean, obviously, we're probably going to need .NET Framework, but beyond .NET Framework, what DLL files do I need? What, uh, what INI files need to exist? What sys files need to exist? I don't have a listing of all that stuff. I'm sure if we figured out a listing of it, we'd probably install it on a, one of these systems and create a how-to video on how to use bottles to install Microsoft Office without using a paid product. But quite frankly, with the amount of time it would take to do that versus just paying the 75 bucks to buy the product, I would just pay the 75 bucks to buy the product. But I do like the fact that bottles exist on this OS because in my opinion, that's the best wine integration tool in order to get or possibly get a Windows application to work correctly. So now that we know that Bottles is installed and we could have some plausible way of installing Windows applications on here, we have Steam installed. We know Steam works on Arch. We know that Steam, uh, we, we know that the emulators are included in the package so we can install the emulators to emulate games on this thing. There's really not much this can't do that Bazite can do. I mean, there is no game mode in this, so I guess from a handheld it would probably be a little clunky. But if you're running it on a PC, I think that this is a better option than the Bazite operating system. Even just from the sense that it feels more complete, better developed, and more, more well put together. Not to mention all the, the gooey, the graphical stuff that's included in the OS that makes it feel more polished and more like up to date and new, um, in my opinion, is just worth it. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Arch just because I don't like Bleeding Edge. I prefer stability, but I think if I had the choice between running this operating system and Bazite, and those are all my only two choices, I would probably run this particular OS. So let me know down in the comments, what do you guys think of Garuda OS? Is this worth running? Um, do you see any use case for an Arch-based gaming system that you would want to run? Have you run it in the past? How does it do? What was your hardware like? Did you have any latency? Did everything work right? Let us know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching the Generic Tech Support YouTube channel. Find the content of this video at https generictechsupport.com forward slash hashtag channel.